So what I'd like to look at now is blood thinners. There are, I've read newspaper articles, health, supposedly health articles, that say everyone over the age of 50 should be on half an aspirin a day. Have you read that? To keep the blood nice and thin to prevent heart disease. Well, let me tell you the latest research on aspirin. It causes brain bleeds, contributing to dementia. It causes eye bleeds, contributing to deterioration of eyesight. It causes stomach bleeds, one of the biggest contributing factors to stomach ulcers. I'm not interested in any of that. The best blood thinners, and I can testify because I used to do the live blood analysis when I worked at Misty Mountain Health Retreat. And if someone had not drunk any, wa any water, their, their blood basically was in clumps like this. You see, the blood should be like this. So when the blood's like that, it's very difficult to read. So I would always presume I've spoiled the slide. It's very easy to spoil a slide. So five blood slides later, it's still like this. And I'd say, have you had any water to drink today? No. <laughs> I, I, I didn't drink because I was traveling and I didn't want to have to keep stopping. And I had to say, well, I'm so sorry, I cannot read your blood, but I'll read it in a couple of days. And as soon as they saw their blood and realised what was happening, they started drinking water. And then I look at their blood in a couple of days and it's, it's nice and free. So I know that one of the best blood thinners is just water. At least eight glasses a day. And so that your body can access it better, please just have half, half a glass at a time. Some people find that, that it's better to have a quarter of a glass at a time. One lady said to me, Barbara, I can't drink water, it makes me feel sick. I said, oh, so what do we do then? In Sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble. Uh, investigate. And I said, uh, Tell me what you do when you wake up in the morning. Well, when I wake up in the morning, I drink 16 ounces of water all at once, but oh, I feel so sick. I said, yeah, I would too if I drank 16 ounces all at once. So what's her body telling her? It's too much at once. <laughs> I said, try half a glass. Oh, it's still too much. Well, try a quarter of a glass. Does that work? Yeah. And just spread it over, spread it over, spread it over. How does God send the rain? Little by little. When we have a torrential downpour, what's the garden like? I was in a hurricane in Fiji once, 150 kilometres an hour the winds were. And then you had the eye of the storm where everything stopped and we got in the car and we're going around. All the mangoes were on the ground. <laughs> in some of the little villages, all their roof, all their roofs had been blown off. Just think of that next time you're tempted to drink a whole glass of water all at once. <laughs> little by little by little, your body can take it. And that little salt, salt. How often do, well, I endeavour to have a crystal of salt before every glass of water. In my little handbag, which is up the back there, I have a little container that has my salt in it. And you know, it, Often at churches, you've got old ladies giving out candies. Well, this old lady gives out salt. <laughs> my grandchildren go to my bag and they know the little container and they put a little bit of salt. Oh, they love salt. Because as soon as they've had the salt, what do they go and do then? Have <laughs> a drink of water. <laughs> Cane pepper. Cane pepper is a remarkable herb. And cane pepper has three effects. Cane pepper, number one, thins the blood. Number two, it is a vasodilator. So I'm teaching you some medical terms here. Does everyone remember what a vasodilator is? It opens the blood vessels. 
So if the blood vessel's this wide, you take a vasodilator, it'll open it this wide. A vasodilator, vaso meaning vascular blood system, it opens the blood vessels. So that's number two, what it does, it's a vasodilator. So that's number two. And number three, it strengthens the arterial walls. So if a person has had a, uh, a build-up in the arteries, if I had build-up in my arteries, I would not have a bypass. What I would do is I would start taking two capsules of cayenne pepper three times a day. In the book um, Back to Eden by Jethro Kloss, he devotes half a page to every herb, ten pages to cane pepper. He quotes two doctors. One doctor says it's impossible to abuse cane pepper. Do you know what that means? You could have a bucket load of cane pepper a day and it won't hurt you. But I don't know anyone who's done that. Back to Eden. Back to Eden. It was written in the early 1900s. It's almost called the Bible on herbs. Strengthens the arterial walls. Some people say, but is that safe? Has that, do, does anyone ever say to their doctor when they're given cholesterol-lowering medication, is that safe? Or when they're given aspirin, is that safe? Do you know they're not? They're not. But remember what the doctor says, it's impossible to abuse cayenne pepper. It might feel like it's burning, but it's tingling. The other doctor said it'll never cause a lesion. You know what that means? It will never damage the lining of your, of your gut. And if you've got a stomach ulcer, it'll even heal that. Yeah? How many capsules Two capsules three times a day. Now that's quite a strong dose. But if someone's coming off blood thinning medication and if anyone's on rat poison, sorry, I mean wolfrin, because <laughs> you know that's what it is. It causes rats to bleed to death. So they don't just give as much to humans. But I've known people that have said they just brush their arm and they bruise. Their n blood just comes out of their nose. They're on too much. So that can be stopped immediately. I can't tell you what to do with your medication, but I can tell you what I would do, and I would go on two capsules three times a day. Remember what the, the good doctor said, a medical doctor in Jethro Kloss's book, he says, you cannot overdo it. You cannot abuse cane pepper. And you watch, if you're taking that much, your digestion will improve, your, your bowels will become nice and regular. Some people say, but isn't it a stimulant? It is. But do you know what it stimulates? Blood. It's a blood stimulant. I'm not interested in a nervous system stimulant, which is caffeine, which is refined sugar, which is alcohol, which is nicotine. They're nervous system stimulants. But remember what Leviticus 17.11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So anything that stimulates blood stimulates life. Yes? What international or what heat units would you um, say is the key? Ah, heat units. Now this is, a, this is an unusual thing for me. We don't have this in Australia. So I do understand in America a lot of your cane pepper is gauged on heat units. Now, the higher the heat unit, the less you need. So that's all I'll say because I'm not familiar with heat units. <clears throat> so I tried one time. I had four knee, 400 international you know, heat units. And then I ran out of those, so then I thought, oh, well, you know, the strong ones would be falling better, right? So I took some of those, I bought some of those. And I'm telling you, whenever I would take those, they'd open up in my stomach. It, I had nothing but pain. My stomach was just like it was on fire and I had to throw up. Okay, so, so the lady said she took 90 units of heat units and the stomach felt like it was on fire and she threw up. So what's the body just saying? It's just a bit much. It's a bit much. And it feels like on fire but it will never cause an ulcer. 
It's just, just a little bit too much. It's actually painful. Yeah, yeah, it's painful. It's just too much. And so what, you're the doctor there. You just, you just bring it back to what you can cope with. So it sounds like the 40,000 units, is it? That, that, that sounds like that works a bit better. That works a bit better. Garlic is also a blood thinner and vasodilator. Ginger is also a blood thinner and also a vasodilator. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. How nice when medicine can be our food. I've had some people say to me, I'm spending a fortune on supplements. How nice when our food can be our healers. Ginger can be taken in many ways. My favourite is to grate it and pour boiling water on it and drink it. I love a hot ginger tea. We also put it in some of our juices. If I'm travelling and there's nothing to eat and I see there's a juice bar, I'll get carrot syrup and apple juice with double ginger. Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> I think, do they have juice bars here in Australia? Many airports have juice bars. Again, you're the doctor, you do what you can. Garlic is very strong in sulphur and someone has a stomach ulcer or a tender stomach, that can be a little strong. But if you crush the garlic into a bowl of hot soup, that the heat from the soup can just take the edge off. Again, it's like Edna, Edna discovered that she's not gonna take the 90 units of uh, <laughs> cayenne pepper again. And sometimes people can handle that if they've got, you know, they've just had a meal. So again, you, you, uh, you play with that. So they're your blood thinners. They're your best blood thinners. And even if you were to have 20 glasses of water a day, uh, a bucket of cayenne pepper a day, garlic and ginger, your blood will never get so thin that when you knock your arm, it'll, it'll bruise and the blood start coming out of your nose. No, no, no. Because remember, herbs work with the body. They're, they're synergistic. Psalm 104, verse 14, the Bible says that God gave herbs for the service of man. They serve you. And so I trust that I've blown the, the cholesterol myth. I trust I've also blown the salt myth. I trust I've also blown the blood thinning myth. You had a question? Yeah, so once you've killed the... Yeah. That's right. Little by little, the plaque can go. And I talked to uh, someone who worked in Yuchi Pines, and they said Agatha Thrash used to tell the story. She was the doctor and her husband, Calvin Thrash, that started Yuchi Pines. They're both past now. She said they had a lady come to do their program who was an alcoholic, and she was in her 70s. And she'd had an angiogram that showed that her arteries were, were 70 and 80% blocked. She did the program, but she not only changed her, her, uh, her whole lifestyle, she surrendered her heart to God. And she said, I, I don't want to do what I was doing anymore. And she said to Agatha, is there a room that I could stay here and I'll work in the garden, I'll fold the laundry? And so Agatha said yes and found a place for her. And she enjoyed the next 10 months probably more than any part of her life. And then she had an embolism in her brain that burst and she had a massive stroke and she, she died. Agatha Thrash did a post-mortem on her and her arteries were clear. Now 10 months before, she had 70 and 80% occlusion of her arteries. It's an interesting story because you don't often, or you're not often able to get that <laughs> clear result. Because I don't know, but you, I'm not interested in having an angiogram. I'm not interested in putting radioactive dye in my body. So how can you tell? One of the ways to know that your arteries are a little narrower and blocked is you get breathless easy. It's not the only cause of breathlessness. But you get breathless easy because there's not a lot of room for the blood to go through and the blood carries the oxygen. That's why breathlessness can be one way. We had one guy 
He was a Samoan guy from the island of Samoa, big guy. He was in his 60s. He said, I don't want, I don't want what they want to do to me. So he came and did our program and every day he got less breathless and less breathless. He was only with us for a week. So even in a week we saw that he was less breathless. I don't know what's going in there. I don't know what's going on in there, I mean. But what's his body saying? We're getting a little bit more room going through there. 